is a bit of a framework that we use to describe our business. Uh, I am specifically going to be speaking with you today around autonomy and safety, and that is about perceiving the environment around the vehicle and navigating it through three-dimensional space. And I'll speak to you specifically about what we're doing in those, uh, in those particular applications. Uh, my colleague Patrick Morgan will then uh, take the stage and talk to you about uh, the electrification business, which is fundamentally about making our planet a greener space by moving into electric drive, and uh, the, our infotainment business, which is a, uh, a strategy around uh, a premium experience uh, inside the cabin of the automobile and streamlining the machine-human interface. But I would like to kick off uh, my presentation with a video uh, that we recently produced that gives you a framework about what we're doing in autonomy. The concept of autonomy just five or ten years ago was very far-reaching, out of the grasp of reality in, in the realm of science fiction. But over the last five years, we have taken great steps to make this more of a reality to people around the world. Analog Devices is laying the foundation around autonomous systems today. And we've been doing this for a number of years with our foundational technologies around radar sensing, LIDAR systems, as well as inertial systems. And so we natively understand how these various sensing modalities work in these end applications. And it gives us a unique advantage to be able to fuse them together to enable autonomy and improve the overall safety of the automobile. So this all is driving size, weight, and power in order to democratize this technology so it can be deployed much more broadly across a variety of different application spaces, such as in the industrial setting, commercial trucking, robotaxis are gaining in popularity, and then finally, I think that you will see this in mass market automotive. When you look out in the next 20 years, the number of sensors in the car are increasing dramatically. These types of sensors are the primary inputs into both the deterministic and the artificial intelligence algorithms which are going to be actuating these systems. And so we put a lot of our energy to make sure that the data that comes off of our sensors is of the highest quality to enable these artificial intelligence algorithms. There can never be an autonomous vehicle that simply has one sensor. There will always be a multiplicity of sensors in the car. The challenge of the future is going to be understanding the balance of all of these different sensors. We have to find some intelligent way to combine them so we can get a better result without increasing the cost of the entire system dramatically. Everything that we do has the goal in mind of not only producing the best quality autonomous system, but ensuring that those types of systems are safe to be used by our consumers. Okay, well, that's my presentation. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to, to give you a little bit of a frame about uh, what we're doing in this space. It level sets us so we can have uh, some good Q&A uh, afterwards. We look at what drives us here at analog devices. It all comes back to the safety of these systems. Uh, you may have heard of the concept of Vision Zero, which is a multinational road safety uh, mandate uh, that there will be zero fatalities in or by a automobile. This is important. The government of Sweden and Volvo specifically uh, kicked off this initiative. And overwhelmingly, this is what drives us on a daily basis. We want to strive to a solution that gets to zero deaths in or by an automobile. How are we doing in this space? So overall, since Vision Zero came to be, you could see a dramatic decrease in terms of uh, vehicle-related fatalities. And this particular example uh, is here in Sweden, specifically because this, was the, uh, this country originated the concept of Vision Zero. But, but throughout Europe, you could see that uh, various countries have taken great steps in order to drive safety in these systems here. And so this is a testament of what can be achieved if we work together to solve these very difficult technical challenges. It has a huge benefit to our society.
You may have heard of the NCAP programs, new car assessment programs. This is technology, these are mandates that are put in place by governments that drive to particular feature sets to achieve the Vision Zero uh, uh, goal on this. And you can see here that we have a variety of different technologies uh, that go into us uh, realizing these particular functions. And so you've heard me talk Pratt's yesterday, uh, as well as uh, in various conferences around automatic emergency braking, automatic emergency steering, driver monitoring systems. Uh, these are fundamental features that are going to be found in cars in 2024 and beyond uh, that go directly to the safety of the automobile. And so it's these types of uh, goals here that, set, that are set upon us that drives our technology uh, on this. And I'll be speaking with you specifically around driver monitoring technologies and different predictive safety types of applications like automatic emergency braking and automatic emergency steering. But what's important to note here is, is that Europe takes a lead in many of these instances by defining uh, these requirements for automobile OEMs. And so when I do my daily work, I always listen to our OEM partners and our tier one customers here in Europe, specifically because they drive such innovation into this space. Something in which I wanted to remind you of about how long we have been in here. We have been working in this space for a very long time. And if you look at our crash sensor technology, our radar technology, our gyroscope technology for stability control applications, uh, our estimations is, is that our sensors save approximately eight lives per day. So again, when it comes to what gets me going, what drives me through my work on an everyday basis, what drives analog devices engineers, it is about saving lives. And we can do this with the most advanced capabilities and technologies available uh, at our fingertips. And if it's not, we create that technology and we bring it into these end, end applications here. And again, we've been in this space for a long time and uh, this has been the result. So this outlines what our history is. We have been in automotive for over a quarter of a century here. Starting in 1993, analog devices created the first monolithic airbag sensor, crash sensor. Why is that important? Well, the United States Congress, two years later, made airbag sensors mandatory on all new automobiles. So that was an example of which ADI was ahead of what's possible. We invested in technology that was needed in order to make automobiles safer, and we did that, and then two years later, governments started to mandate that technology as a required fitment on all new cars. We're seeing that now today in radar. So you hear that uh, NCAP 2022 and beyond is going to require automatic emergency braking types of functionality. These are radar-based solutions. We have been working in radar for over 15 years. Uh, Analog Devices has developed this technology in many different applications like communications infrastructure, as well as uh, aerospace applications. And now we are bringing it into the automotive uh, applications here, uh, bringing the size, weight, and power, and making it automotive ruggedized so it can be found in every automobile on the planet. Uh, to that end, we have recently acquired Simeo, Simeo Absolute Positioning, which is a small industrial radar company in Neubiberg outside of Munich. Uh, they have brought very interesting system level technology around cooperative radar uh, that we are now working directly with OEMs here in Europe uh, to realize in future car platforms. And there will be more from us in the future as we continue to work on technologies around LIDAR sensing, and more advanced inertial technologies as well. If you look at a car today, so in many instances, you do not have radar technology in cars. It is an optional uh, feature in which you have to pay perhaps several thousand euros uh, in order to get in the car. Cameras are becoming more prevalent. Obviously, backup cameras are part of standard fitment. But when systems were designed for in the cars today, they were largely handling use cases that are quite benign. So perhaps on the highway with very limited uh, other kinds of obstacles that need to be dealt with. And as a result, the sensing suite that were in the car was more reasonable. Obviously, you need to have crash sensors uh, throughout the car in order to uh, 
uh, undertake the passive safety challenge, but predictive safety, being able to see around the car and predict the environment so the car can be actuated and avoid any issue, that is not necessarily part of the remit uh, in today's automobiles. If you contrast that to what the vehicle platforms are going to look like tomorrow, it is much, much different. So first off, the challenge that lies in front of us is substantially different than a simple benign highway. You can see here in an urban setting, there are pedestrians, there are bicycles, there are other automobiles that all play into how the vehicle needs to perceive the world around it and actuate itself. Uh, to that end, you can see that the number of sensors in the car are going up dramatically, as I said in the video. You will see radar technology being much more prevalent in cars starting in 2022 as automatic emergency braking becomes uh, standard uh, fitment in the cars. But different technologies like LIDAR, which is light sensing, a light ranging technology, or inertial measurement units, which is an advanced inertial technology that does motion processing to support what's known as dead reckoning, keeping your car going in the lane of travel, even if all of the other perception sensors fail. The concept of sensor fusion is also becoming much more critical. Today, systems are largely independent, meaning that the radar systems operate with radar inputs, the camera systems operate with camera inputs, but the interplay between these different types of sensing modalities uh, are not there today. But going forward, we want to implement what's known as sensor fusion, where all of these sensing modalities come together algorithmically in order to give you the best uh, answer to actuating the car and perceiving the environment around it. Why is that the case? Because not any one sensor is perfect for these applications. In other words, cameras are exceptional at reading signs and seeing colors, but in inclement weather and in dark lighting con conditions, they don't necessarily do very well. Radar, on the other hand, can supplement those weaknesses. Uh, LIDAR technology, which holds the promise of much higher resolution, longer ranges, also has issues with size, weight, and power today that need to be addressed before these could be more widely deployed in the automobile. And so when we look at this challenge here, this is a very interesting from an analog devices perspective because we see a lot more hardware in these cars. But as I mentioned in the video, just putting more hardware in the car is not the solution here. There are intelligent ways in which we can algorithmically combine these technologies, either through sensor fusion or other types of technologies, in order to reduce the overall hardware in the system, but still maintaining the top level performance that you need in order to deal with use cases as seen here in the upper right hand corner. I just wanted to explain a little bit about some of the specific technologies when you go out and buy your automobile, uh, starting in 2022, these are going to be features in which you're going to explicitly ask for, or it's going to be standard features in your car. So first off, automatic emergency braking. Starting in 2022, this will be standard fitment on all new automobiles, meaning that the car will actually brake in case of an emergency. This is a radar-based technology, typically mounted in the front part of the automobile, that can see anywhere from 100 to 200 meters out in front of the car. All right, and in that way, through radar technology to measure Doppler, which is velocity, which is directionality of the automobile, how fast it's moving and in which direction, it will be able to ascertain if there is any problems in which the car actually needs to take action and stop. And so you see that in many optional fitment uh, uh, automobiles today, but again, standard fitment starting in 2022 with ADI radar technology as a fundamental piece of the solution. Taking it to the next step, automatic emergency steering. So this is getting into higher levels of autonomy. Not only is the car actually braking, but it's actually steering out of the path uh, of travel here. And so here, the radar technology is actually implemented uh, or augmented with what we call the inertial measurement unit which manages the motion of the automobile to be able to steer it out of, out of the way. This is an important step here because this is a fundamental implementation of sensor fusion. You need to have basically these two types of sensors come together in some intelligent way to adequately actuate the car uh, out of the path of danger here. 
So again, a piece where ADI has been developing these technologies for over 15 years in other application spaces, now bringing it down into the automotive space here to realize higher levels of autonomy and safety. So I would like to also point out driver monitoring technologies. So this is also a very big piece of realizing autonomy. As we move from what is known as level two autonomy, which is very simple types of sensors and use cases in which the car is dealing with, to full level five autonomy in which there's no steering wheel uh, in the automobile, which is still several years away, a part of that is monitoring the health of the driver. Is the driver paying attention? Uh, can the driver take over in case of uh, an emergency? from a car which is currently being driven autonomously to something in which the driver needs to take uh, an intervention here. And so our time of flight technology <laughs> goes to directly to be able to monitor the health of the vehicle you can, or the health of the driver and you can see various artificial intelligence algorithms that can be built upon this to basically understand a person's gaze, their uh, ability, their health of the, of the individual, just in terms of if are they under the weather or have they been drinking or something along those lines. This type of visual inputs can be input into those types of uh, algorithms in order to understand the driver's state. Also, uh, a piece of the NCAP requirement is being able to detect occupants in the car. And so this particular technology here uh, can be implemented through our LIDAR, which is our, our time of flight technology, or radar technology. It is a piece of what we would implement in the car to be able to realize this type of inputs to these types of systems. How do we do this? So if you looked at analog devices perhaps just 10 years ago, we did not necessarily have a full comprehension of these types of systems and how they actually uh, are implemented. To that end, just in the last few years, we have outfitted a full car with our sensors. So this is an important step, because in addition to developing the semiconductors that go into this, we have to have a greater understanding of the use cases which need to be addressed in order to achieve full autonomy. So the only way for us to do that is to basically put a car on a street with our sensors to understand how it interplays uh, with the world around it here. Some of the more interesting use cases, for example, that I have heard is that can you detect a bicycle next to a guardrail under a bridge? So these complex use cases need to be comprehended and then with the capabilities in these semiconductor components that we're developing today, we can put a lot of that processing in the chips itself. But in addition to the chips that we're developing, we develop a series of algorithms and software that sit on top of these chips to be able to realize the performance uh, that we're asking here. Again, the way that we do this is through systems such as this, which is located down in Munich, uh, to be able to really comprehend these challenging use cases and be able to react to it. Analog devices is a tier two. In other words, we sell to the tier one that sells to the OEMs. But in many instances, we have to talk directly to the OEMs in order to really understand the challenges that they have. Systems such as this allows us to have a much richer dialogue uh, with our OEM partners as we define our next generation offerings to the market. So some of the other things that I wanted to mention in terms of how we approach the, the automotive market here. Uh, so you will see this in my presentation also, Patrick will mention this throughout that we have an incredible focus on quality. Uh, this is something in which Analog Devices believes is a competitive uh, uh, value proposition uh, to the marketplace. We have been in automotive for a number of years. As I mentioned, our MEMS crash sensors, uh, we've started to develop in the mid-90s here. These types of products have to last for a decade, if not longer. And so when we develop them, we develop them with a mindset towards zero defects. And we have a robust organization which understands these applications and does very detailed failure analysis when we have returns. Again, this is part and parcel on how we do our work on a daily basis here, our commitment to quality uh, overall. So I really wanted to focus on that now 
uh, just because when we talk about everything here, it's very aspirational that we want to have full autonomy in these systems. But at the end of the day, the most important aspect that we have to achieve is zero deaths and safety. And part of that is delivering the highest quality parts to the industry. So when we talk to our customers, and I believe this is my final slide here from what I recall, right? Yes, okay. Uh, and I wanted to emphasize this overall, that when we develop this technology, we are part of a larger ecosystem overall here in Europe. I would say overwhelmingly, the major OEMs are driving the technology that I am talking about by defining these challenging use cases, by trying to fulfill the vision zero imperative that I mentioned here. So we deal directly with all of the major brands here in Europe as we define what we need to do in the autonomous space, as well as in the infotainment and electrification business that Patrick is going to talk about next here. And it is through that uh, engagement here where we define our roadmaps. But certainly, we engage very deep, deeply with our long-standing and direct customers here, such as Bosch and Continental and others. These are our primary customers. Uh, and we will continue to work with our Tier 1 customers. But again, when we look at the future of, of automobiles, it will require a fundamental re-architecture of these systems. These systems are being rethought from the ground up. And in many instances, the best customers or the best engagement partners to define what those systems look like are obviously the people that are developing the cars. And that is where we sit in terms of the overall ecosystem. So, this is my final slide, and I just want to leave you with an aspirational note overall. There's a very few times in my career and where I felt that there was an intersection point between, as an engineer, working on some of the more difficult technical problems that I have ever been challenged with, but also those particular technical challenges, if we have an opportunity to solve them, brings a huge societal benefit to what we're talking about in terms of saving lives uh, in, in the world. And so I'm very much, you know, excited about the opportunity that sits out in front of us here. And, you know, I'm looking forward to continuing this discussion with you as we move forward over the next few years. So thank you very much for your time.